Good morning. Welcome to the School of the Holy Spirit. Come on in. There is a flow. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Woo, teach us, teach us. Teach us to enter in. Woo. Hallelujah. Good morning. Let's get our Instagram family in. Good morning, IG. Good morning, Zoomers. God bless you. Good morning. In the spirit. There is a flow. Good morning, Zoomers. Good bless. God bless you. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Wherever you're coming in, God bless you. Teach us. Good morning, Deborah. God bless you, baby. Thank you for all my tags. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Anika Wilson Brown. You enjoying yourself at the Proctor Conference? Yes, yes. Come on in. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are rivers, streams of life. Now gushing forth. Oh, don't you want it? Hey. Yes, I want it. Good morning, IG. That part right there. <laughs> yes, teach us. To enter in. Good morning, Chaplain. Good morning, everybody. Hey. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Teach us to hear. Teach us to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you gonna know if you can't hear? <laughs> Woo yes, yes. Come on in. Come on, class. Class is in session. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, class. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Pastor Davis. Good morning, my sweet sister Ruthie. Good morning, Lady Vicey. Martha Boss. Pastor Neil. You hear them sopranos? <laughs> Woo! Say, how do you show up, Dr. Anika? How are we showing up? I'm so sorry you had to encounter that. Woo! Teach us. Yes, teach us, teach us, teach us, yes, 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 Woo, teach us. Yes. Hey, Andrea Robinson Jefferson. Listen, listen. 
what I want you to understand is that hearing is vital. You know, and when the Lord gave me this song, I never even imagined that it would last this long. But here we are. Teach us. Come on. Woo! Come on, Mary Milton Spencer. Alicia, God bless you. Carolyn Gregory. Woo! Hearing is vital. Put it in the chat, Bishop. <laughs> Woo! Shout out to my horse to enter. to end. Yes, yes, yes. Ears, ears, ears. Belly. Teach us to listen. Heart. When it's over here, how you gonna know you can't hear? How are you going to know? How are you going to know? If you can't hear, Woo! if you can't hear, teach us, Woo! teach us to enter in. One more time. Come on. Come on. Teach me to hear. here or when it's there how you gonna move <laughs> Reverend Jamison what is the title of the song there is a flow by me <laughs> the project is called live and complication <laughs> this is today is your day for a miracle they recorded it it's your Greg Davis. Teach us. Teach me to hear. God, don't let me get out of the flow. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us. just to hear I promise you when the spirit of the Lord gives you something it has no shelf life it has no shelf life because I'm telling you when we recorded this song and we were I wrote this years ago years and years ago while I was in Rocky Mountain North Carolina good morning say oh my god and the spirit of the Lord I impressed that song while I was on the floor ministering and I could hear the water and the importance of the song, the, the, the cruciality, if that's a word, of the song, the cruciality of it is that there is a flow. There's a flow. But in order to, to get in the flow, hearing is crucial. Good morning and welcome to the School of the Holy Spirit. I'm Bishop Corletta J. Vaughn. <laughs> I'm a pneumatologist. I teach Holy Spirit. I teach how God has blessed us with the beautiful gift of Holy Spirit. And water, water has its own sound. Water has its own sound. And it doesn't sound like anything else. And so we must be so in tune with our ears that we can hear Holy Spirit. 
I want you to write this in the chat. Holy Spirit has a distinct voice. Put that in the chat. Holy Spirit has a distinct voice. <laughs> Sister Regina says, I love your song. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Felicia. Good morning. IG, are you with me? Good morning uh, to all of our wonderful, wonderful uh, women, men, and uh, sons, daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, Holy Spirit has a distinct voice. And you must train your ear. Thank you, Reverend Jemison. Thank you, Chaplain. Come on, uh, IG. Are y'all putting it in the chat? Uh, those of you that are on Facebook Live, like, tag, and share. <coughs> good morning, Dr. Annette Maliante. Jean Dutton, good morning. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Elder Kathy Hawkins. Cheryl McKenzie Best, Barbara Sykes, Irene Gray coming up the timeline, Mama Wanda Craig. Good morning, Ernest Alexander. Good morning, sons and daughters, kings and queens. Uh, Denise Kirby, Pastor William Lamone. Holy Spirit has a distinct voice. Please put that in the chat. Holy Spirit does not sound like anything else. So understanding how Holy Spirit flows. Understanding means that you must develop an intimate relationship with the person of Holy Spirit. In this era that we are now living in, saints of God, people of God, we are under the dispensation and management of Holy Spirit. And so this now becomes our, our, our passion, our thrust. Uh, should be to understand Apostle Blackwell, uh, Wendy Campbell, Linda Sapp. Thank you, Shay. Thank you for joining this this morning. Hey, Sonia. Good morning, Sora and beloved. Sandra Goolsby. Good morning, Facebook user. Listen, Holy Spirit has a distinct voice. Now, listen to me carefully. Lean in. Many of us are familiar with the power of Holy Spirit. We may even be familiar a little bit with the presence of Holy Spirit. But I am pushing you. I am encouraging you. I am exhorting you to get to know the person of Holy Spirit. You may know his presence, uh, Pastor Zebulon. You may understand, Dr. Crosby, his, his presence. You may even have tapped in to power. But I want you to know his person. Because the better you know a person, the better you know their voice. <laughs> Walk with me today. Walk with me today. Woo! Hallelujah. Not just manifestations, Pastor Schiller. Not just those things, Sylvia Spikes, Pastor Rita Bill, but his person. I knew my mother's voice. I can still hear her voice. I knew my father's voice in a crowd, Pastor Folsom of thousands, uh, Prophet is black, in the, in the crowd of thousands, my mother's voice was distinct in my ear. Dr. Aquiline and Saints, I don't just want you to be familiar with the power of Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, the, the demon killing, yoke destroying power of Holy Spirit. I don't just want you to know the presence, that that glow that comes in a room, that 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 heaviness, that weightiness of his glory. But we must know his person. <laughs> Blanca. Woo, Dr. Angela, I must know his person to know his voice. Uh, I, I wrote this in uh, my book, Living with the Advantage. And if you don't have it, you need to run to Amazon right quick or you need to run to our website holy spirit has a distinct voice page 41 it says even if you played outside as a child with a group of children when a mother called for her child to come inside you knew if it was your mother's voice or not <laughs> The more you, the better you know. Oh, Deidre Smith, I read your uh, your comment. Yes, I'm so proud of what Holy Spirit 
is doing for you. Hey, Loretta Bisto, God bless you. Hallelujah, Pastor William Lamont. Holy Spirit has a distinct voice, Barbara Etheridge, and, and the test of your intimacy, Apostle Elaine Benson, the test, Evangelist Akiba, uh, Wanda Sue, the test of your maturity, your intimacy with Holy Spirit is how well can you distinguish his voice from your own? How well can I distinguish his voice from my own? People say, well, I didn't know if that was me. Okay, you don't know his person. You need to know his person. So you must spend time. You must spend time. I'm sure that as my mother caressed me, she would probably sing to me. I'm sure as a, as a child in vitro in the womb, I'm sure that I spent longer time with her than I did with anybody because Nine months of my in, my journey was inside of her. And so I spent time with her. I, uh, uh, Dr. Vita speaks. I spent time. I, 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 I knew her. I'm sure as she held me and caressed me, she probably talked to me. She sang to me. I'm sure as she was feeding me, as she was nursing me, as she was changing me, bathing me, she spoke to me. I'm sure that I spent enough quality time hearing her voice uh, that as she taught me to walk, oh God, <laughs> Ooh, as she taught me to walk and, 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 and as she taught me to, uh, to <clears throat> be independent of, <clears throat> excuse me, she taught me to walk and be independent. I'm sure she said, come here, come here, come here. And she fed me my bottle and as she, fed me my food. I'm sure she would say, open your mouth, open your mouth. You know, uh, come on, baby, let's go to sleep. Let's go to sleep. And she would put me down. I'm, I'm just going to assume she prayed and until I went to sleep and she rocked me, she held me because it was, it was, it was uh, her voice. It was her voice. I, you know, I don't know where my daddy's voice came in, but I knew my mother's voice and I knew it was distinct from mine. Oh God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so I knew if I was outside with a lot of children and we all had a certain time to be in the house, uh, our, our mothers would come out and call their children. But I knew when my mother called me because I, I knew her voice. And so my response time, I was never hesitant that it wasn't my mother's voice. I was never uh, um, questioning, is that my mama? Is that my mama? Is that your mama? <laughs> because I knew her voice. I knew her voice. Who is it in your life? If it wasn't your mother, was it your father? Was it an aunt? Was it a big mama? Was it a granny? Was it a papa? Who in your life has the most distinct voice? I'm talking about human now. I'm talking about in the earth, who has the most distinct voice that you can pick it out of any crowd? <clears throat> who has the most distinct voice in your ear? Is it is it your mother? Is it your your father? Is it a spiritual leader? Is it your big mama? Whose voice is distinct in your ear? Pamela says, my mother and grandmother. <laughs> Emily says, I could hear my mother and dad's voice from blocks away. You better know it. <laughs> if I was on the other block, I could hear my mama. I could hear my daddy. And there was, of course, that intimate time of spending with my father that I had to develop uh, that hearing for my father and to be able to distinguish the, dis the difference between my mother's voice and my father's voice. Because each voice meant something different. Each voice carried its own decibel. Each voice carried its own impact. And each voice carried its own purpose. Hallelujah. Some of us, we are your, your apostle, your pastors, your leaders. You hear our voice. Apostle Cliff Turner. Wow. Amen. Come on, Rhonda. And uh, Miss Apostle Lathan. Yes. Ladia Jones. Oh, praise God. 
uh, amen, and senior pastor. Hallelujah. Mama Pearl, I'm good, mother. Thank you. Uh, whose voice? Thank you for taking care of me, uh, Mama Pearl. Dr. Mary Seegers, she says, my husband, Gertis Lee said, my mother, it was my mom. Yes. Now that she has gone to glory, it's my pastor. Uh, there are people in our in our ear because of our relationship. I like this. I, I want you to see this. Uh, Vita says, listen, I love that. And you're so right. She said, I could hear my mom whisper my name in my sleep and I'd wake up. Mm, yes, Lord. Woo, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Overseer Lenita says, I can still hear my father's voice when he called me baby. Mm. <laughs> Woo, Bitch, Pastor Rita Bill, Dr. Cheryl Piscopo, absolutely. She's a distinct voice in my ear, my pastor. Praise God, my grandfather and grandmama. Who has a distinct voice in your ear? <laughs> Adrian says, I wish I knew my mom's voice. Oh, I understand. I understand. Hallelujah. My husband, my mother, you know your voice. You know these voices. They are distinct. My mother's voice and my father's voice had a different impact on me. If my mother called me, I knew I was okay. <laughs> If my father called me, <laughs> and sometimes I'd be watching the little black and white TV, and my mama would be calling me. I heard her, and my daddy would say, "Did you hear your mama?" Yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You know, <laughs> kind of. It just carried a, a different impact. Carried a different impact. Now, I'm not just talking about the sound. I'm also talking about the impact. What? Did your, the impact of that voice, what did it mean to you? Was there love? Was there respect? Was there honor? <laughs> hey, uh, LaShawn Michael, I'm missing you. I hope you're healing well, darling. Tanya Graham, uh, when, when you speak, <laughs> Pastor Charles Dove, thank you so much, Lady Vicey. Hallelujah. Uh, it's not just the sound. I want you to know it has an impact, warm, loving, uh, disciplinary, accountability, responsibility. Each voice carries something very different, very unique. So Holy Spirit, okay, here it is. My pastor and Bishop William Murphy, absolutely. Voices impact us differently. Woo, Rabbi God, Mama Wanda Craig, my sissy. Your voice and teaching have impacted all, thank God. My mama and daddy's voice, I knew. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Lady Vice said, I can still hear my mother singing those songs. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Woo, Rabbi Let me listen to this. She said, when my mother died, I would call her voicemail just to hear her voice on the phone. I understand. I understand. So totally understand. So, Bishop, what are you saying today? I'm saying to you. Now watch this. I'm going to go someplace. Can you distinguish the voice of the Father God from the voice of Jesus Son God from the voice of Holy Spirit God? I want, I, I'm asking something different now. Are you able to distinguish the Father's voice? Are you able to distinguish the Father's voice from Jesus' voice and from Holy Spirit's voice because each of them have a distinct sound. <laughs> Ooh, Shataba has a different sound. I know my sister's voice. I don't get she, I was at the funeral the other day and I was sitting down in, in the room with the people and I heard her before I saw her. I said, my sister's here. I know her voice. Not just her singing voice, y'all know that. But I know her. And I know I know my children's voice. I know the dis difference between Shannon and she. I know them differently. Now, here's the question. Here's the question. <laughs> Your grace, uh, Bishop Charity, welcome. welcome. Uh, listen to me, Dr. Thea. Are we, Neil, listen. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. A voice is the sound made when air from the lungs passes through the vocal cords. 
Wow. When the edges of the vocal cords come together, the air makes them vibrate, which creates sound. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Wow. Now, here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> here it is. Do you know father's voice? Do you know son? Do you know Holy Spirit? Now, intimacy. I'm talking about intimacy. I'm talking about intimacy. <laughs> I'm talking about they each have a distinct voice. They each have a different impact. Okay? Woo! Hey, Thompson, listen to me. The father has a voice, Pastor Erskine. He, the father has a voice. He has a sound. The son has a voice, a sound. Mm. Holy Spirit has a voice. And each of them carry different impact. Are you able to recognize the distinction between father's voice, because that, that, that means something different. The son and Holy Spirit. Okay. I, I want us to understand that the, 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 the most intimate relationship as you begin to develop and cultivate relationship, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You will be able to discern, uh, Dr. Kanita, you'll be able to discern the, the voice. You'll be able to discern that. Hallelujah. <laughs> you want to be able to discern that. John chapter number 10, get your Bible for just a moment. It says, when he has brought out all of his own, John 10, verses 4 and 5, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, the stranger, because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Wow. Now, here, here's the thing I want. I want to. I want to tap into this. Uh, your grace, Bishop Winfrey. God bless you. Woo, shatara la ooshkata. Woo, ba 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 she. And so I, I recognize that, you know, I teach to a multitude of constructs. I, I recognize that um, those of us who have Father, Son, Holy Spirit as three distinct persons. And there are some of us that have Father, Son, Holy Spirit as one person, uh, three in one, and some of us are one in three. I'm not going to fight it. You got to pick your battles. I don't think there's ever going to be a win in that conversation. I think that based on how you were raised, based on how you were trained, based on your construct, your doctrines, your background, there's no win on that. that that's, that's a mute conversation. That conversation has, has, has no win uh, because I think we're all saying the same thing. And so I don't fight that. We, we, don't, we don't need to fight that. Three and one, one and three. It's okay. Either way, we win. Either way, it's okay. There is no win to that conversation. And so if you are from whatever construct you're in, whether you are Father, Son, Holy Spirit, being three distinct persons with one essence, or whether you are Father, Son, Holy Spirit, being one, three in one, uh, we all it's all good. It's all good. We don't fight that. That's not a fight we need to have. So don't even get into a debate with folk about that. Because whether it's two and uh, three and one or one and three, we're talking about the same God. We all win. Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Father, Holy Spirit, 
the dispensation of the Father, the dispensation of the Son, the dispensation of Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter. We, we're, we're all saying the same thing. We approach it, uh, and you'll get into the semantics of it, and you're just going to make enemies, right? No matter what, you need to be able to distinguish those voices. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Dr. Seals. Good morning. Good afternoon, Dr. Marla King. Good morning, Rashawn. Let's let's not let's not fight over fighting. Let's 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 not just practice fighting. Let's let's have something significant that we can agree on. Three and one, one and three. Same God. Same God. You 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 go to one space and it's a Jesus only environment, but they still teach you about Holy Spirit. They still teach you about Father. And however that's the math is still three. Thank you, Ruby. It's still three. And it's one. So it's one and three. Or three and one. It's, it's okay. We don't fight that. All right? Same God. We're in the same body. We don't have to fight that. All right? So I recognize that as a pneumatologist, I teach to all constructs. I teach in all contexts. All right? So there are people that are in this class and I'm teaching you about Holy Spirit because you have been Jesus only. And so you have you have put everything in that space. I'm teaching to those who may be within a Trinitarian construct. And you've been real focused on Jesus too. Or you've been real focused on the Father. I teach to those who come into this class from an Old Testament construct. And don't even really yet know who Jesus is. But have some understanding of the Father and Holy Spirit. And so when you are a teacher, I'm a teacher, uh, I, I'm an apostolic teacher. And so when I teach, I recognize and I teach to a very large congregation, a very large congregation. But what you will never find Bishop Carla Vaughn doing is fighting over the Godhead. That is a mute fight. You will never win it because there's no win because God can be whatever he wants to be. If he wants to be three in one, he can be that. If he wants to be one in three, he can be that too. He's God. He's sovereign. So don't get, let's not get into fight. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. <laughs> Amen. My, what I want to say, <laughs> that was my disclaimer. <laughs> Lean in. But what I want to say is how do you know their voice? No matter what your construct is. Okay. I want, I want you to understand, we all have different learning styles. Thank you, Neil. We all, some of us need that. Some of us have that construct. Some of us were born into it. <laughs> so listen to me very carefully. They each have a distinct voice. And as I was saying to you, as I was sharing with you my, my background, I knew my father's voice. I knew my mother's voice. And they each had a different and distinct sound but also a distinct impact. When we are looking at the Old Testament and we see the dispensation of the Father, we, 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 we understand that the way that the Father sounded is not the way when Jesus came that he sounded. Okay, I'm going someplace. <laughs> Rabbi Kashkata, Overseer Ryan, I, I know. <laughs> Come on, Zebula, I love you. Come on, Overseer, I, I, I don't fool around. So we don't, thank you, thank you, Marla, you was in my spirit. We avoid foolish conversations and learn, we avoid strife. We don't get into strife. We are apt to teach. We don't get into strife. The Godhead argument is a mute, is an unprofitable argument. Now, under the Old Testament, where Father, is the, the, the dispensation. That's the dispensation. His voice was very different than in the dispensation of Jesus the Son. All right? It was so different that when God spoke <laughs> that the children of Israel said to Moses, uh, you speak to us <laughs> uh, because we don't want to hear <laughs> uh, from God anymore, okay? 
Exodus 20 and 19. Somebody grab that for me. The math is still math. Good morning, Bertram Harris. Good morning. Good afternoon. Come on. Come on. So I got a teacher. I'm a teacher. And so uh, the children of Israel said to Moses, listen, <laughs> uh, you need to talk to us. Because God, Father, when he speaks to us, we fear we will die. We fear we will die. Listen, I'm teaching y'all. I'm teaching better than y'all shout. We, we fear that we will die. <laughs> and so and so they said, uh, uh, oh, Keith, I think it's yours. Please come out and go out, come back in. Uh, he said, um, okay. <laughs> he said, look, uh, God said, okay, Moses, I'll just talk to you. I'll just talk to you. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you, Wendy. So here's Exodus. Get your paper Bibles. Uh, Exodus 20, 18 and 19. Get your Bibles. The revival of the paper Bible. Come on, get your Bibles. And all the people experiencing the thunder and the lightning, the trumpet blast and the smoking mountains, they were afraid. So they pulled back and stood at a distance. And they said to Moses, you speak to us. Ooh, and we'll listen. But don't have God speak to us or we will die. You understand this? So the, the, the voice of the Father, the uh, psalmist said, it splits the trees of Lebanon. You see, so when 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 the dispensation of the old covenant, which we believe to be the dispensation of Jehovah. There are types and shadows of the Christ. There are types and shadows of Holy Spirit. And in some instances, we even see and hear uh, Holy Spirit being pronounced in the old covenant. But in the old covenant, under the dispensation of the old covenant, it was the father's voice that was preeminent. He said, we can't take that voice. We, we can't take that voice. Now, do you know that voice? Have you ever heard that voice? I have. And it was very, very corrective. Very corrective. I probably had done something too long and so wrong that now the father was speaking to me. And I was very clear that this is corrective. Not punitive, but purging. The purging voice of the father. It's not punitive because God is not punitive. God is spirit. Father is spirit. But purging, it was like, okay, uh, do you hear me? Yes, Lord, I hear you. So I probably was in a place I wasn't supposed to be. I was probably in a, doing something I wasn't, and, and I, had, I had stepped past a boundary or was about to step over a line. Very corrective. And so the father said, uh, I'll just speak to you, Moses. I, I won't speak to them anymore because they cannot handle my voice. My voice has too much of an impact in it. I've heard it. I've heard it audible. I've heard it loud. And I knew who it was. Now, let's fast forward to the dispensation of God the Son. Now, remember when Jesus was being baptized and, the, and he comes up out of the water and the Father's voice says, this is my beloved Son. Hear ye him. I am well pleased with him. Now that, that was like, don't mess 
with that. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> Listen to this very carefully. You began to hear the, the voice of Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, after he is baptized. You don't hear much from him prior to. All right? Now, you began to hear his voice. You began to hear his voice. It was a very distinct voice from the Father's voice. Different impact. Come, follow me. And I'll make you fishers of men. Come, follow me. What is your name? The, 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 the voice now is, 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 is the voice of mercy. This is the voice of mercy. The Bible says that grace and truth kissed in him. And so when the word is made flesh and dwells among us, now he takes on the humanity, takes on humanity. And so his voice is a different sound and a different impact. It's always redemptive. Father's voice is corrective. The son's voice is redemptive. Always redeeming. Always giving you a, 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 a way to fix it. Always giving you an opportunity to bring change, to bring evolution, uh, 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 to, to become a better you. That's the voice of Jesus. To, to, to bring you, a, a, to make you a, a better you. Thank you, Pastor William Lamont. I thought about that scripture in Genesis 3, where Adam, when, when, they, when they had disobeyed, the voice of God was heard walking in the garden. It was corrective. Now you, <laughs> Adam, where are you? Corrective, correct. By the time you get to that place, <laughs> woo, <laughs> come on, Sandra, I know you're right. <laughs> woo, listen to me very carefully. The voice of Jesus is redemptive. It's always redemptive. Now, remember that the father's voice is never punitive. It's not punitive, but it is corrective. My dad was not a punitive dad, but he was corrective. And my mother said, I'm going to have to talk to your daddy when he gets home. Baby, you're talking about, a, you're talking about become an immediate intercessor. <laughs> I became an immediate intercessor. Like, what? <laughs> you're telling my daddy? Oh, dear, not, 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 not. Because my father's voice, you see, so it's, it's oh, okay. So, <laughs> right, evangelist, so it's all right. It, it, the constructs are the same. Okay, so Jesus comes in full of grace and truth, in the fullness of the Godhead in a body form. But he takes on a different voice. So the father's voice is very corrective, not punitive, but cleansing. The son, Jesus, is, <laughs> is redemptive. Come follow me. I'm going to make you a better person. I I'm going to make you a better person. Ooh, I'm going I'm to make you a, a, a better version of yourself. Come on, I, I, I became an instant in, intercessor. I, 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 did, I didn't have no room for error. My margin of error was immediately corrected. And so Jesus is, is the voice that is always redemptive. Like, come on, you can do better than that. You know, it's always, you can be a better person. You can be a better version of yourself. You don't have to have that language. Come on, follow me, follow me, follow me. And I'll make something, 
I'll make fishers of men out of you. I'll, I'll make you a better person if you'll follow me. I'll make you a better version of yourself. How many of you know you got some areas that Jesus needs to redeem you? He's redemptive. He's very redemptive. And so you need to understand the distinctions of the voice. <laughs> now, Holy Spirit's voice is instructional. Somebody write this down. Who's writing this down for me? Who's capturing this? Thank you. Thank you, Camilla. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. So the Father is corrective. The Son is redemptive. And Spirit is instructional. Very instructional. Ooh, Thank you, Neil. Ooh, somebody's getting this. Somebody's getting this. Jesus says, now you know that was dumb. That was a foolish place. You don't come follow me. God, let me bring you into a better uh, version of yourself. Let me bring you into a better version of yourself. So when you hear that, and, and, and you say, uh, okay, Jesus said, come, now come on, that, that was okay, that was, that was okay, but <laughs> my, my evangelist, me with me since she was a teen, uh, evangelist Tish, and one day she, I was, I was activating the gifts of the spirit, <laughs> and we still laugh about it today, and uh, she, the gifts of the spirit, she was activating the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the word of prophecy. And I said, who has a word? And we began to speak in tongues. I'm activating the gifts. I'm, I'm activating the gifts. And and uh, as I'm activating the gift, uh, praise God, as I'm activating these gifts, uh, let's see. I'm trying to see. There we are. As I'm activating the gifts, she comes up and she gives a word. And I said, now, that was good. But I want you to go back and pull from your belly. Okay. See, I knew the dis I knew the difference. I knew the difference between the voice of the spirit and the voice. And she was developing hearing the word of knowledge, developing the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, prophecy, and we laugh about it today. Now she's absolutely accurate in uh, in, in hearing and being able to deliver that word. <laughs> Pastor Val, so 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 the father's voice is corrective. The Son's voice is redemptive. You can be a better version of yourself. You, can, you, you could have done that better. All right? You can hear that. Now, come on. Let's, let's you know, you, you, can, you, you don't have to be angry. You can be a better version. You, you, you can become a better person. It's redemptive. It's, it's redemptive. Now, Holy Spirit's voice is instructional because he is the leader and the guide. He is the teacher. He is in the earth, living on the inside of us to keep us in the truth. All right. So you've got to be able to distinguish Holy Spirit's voice from your own. Holy Spirit's voice is very navigational. Very navigational. Very, come on. Very, it, it's, it, it navigates you because Holy Spirit is our guide. He's our navigational system. He's there with us. He's there to help you differentiate between this or that. He's there to help you He's instructional to give you a better option than what you would normally choose. <laughs> uh, he, 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 he will, he, he's our navigational system. He's there daily waiting to lead us, to, to push us, to pull us back or to reposition us. He's, Holy Spirit is, is there to tell us, go forward, come back. 
Yes, now, no later. So, so you've got to be able to, to hear, to hear each voice, to, to hear and to be able to distinguish. So John is, uh, uh, Jesus is giving us this lesson in John 10. It says, you know his voice and a stranger you will not follow. When we are hearing the Spirit's voice, it's navigational, it's instructional. And you've got to know how you should respond. Oh God, I wish I, I, I wish I had. I wish y'all were shouting. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could hear y'all shouting. I, I don't know if this is helping you, but I want you to understand you can develop a relationship so intimate that you know the distinction between each part of the God you serve. You got to know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that you can stop the noise. You can stop being noisy. You see, you can you ekabashekete. Woo, rabba baba shekata da hasa. And a lot of says, I've never wow heard this in my life. Wow, wow. Woo, wow, wow, wow. So the, the navigational voice of the Holy Spirit is to lead you and guide you. And keep you in the truth. This is your global positioning system. Living on the inside of you. So when people say, I didn't know what to do. I say, well, why didn't you know? Well, Bishop, I never did it before. I, I, I said, why didn't you know? So many people are in the body of Christ. And they only know the corrective voice of God. So that's all they know because that's who they're intimate with. That's all they know is that voice of correction, that voice of rebuke, that voice. They, that's all they know. They preach like that. They live like that. They teach like that. You know, when some people were coming to our church in the beginning, they were very father, father, father. Father, and, and, and they would say, okay, you're going to fool around, God going to kill you. I said, ho, 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 stop it. We're not living in that dispensation. You can't say that to people. Don't say that to folks. But that was the only voice they knew. They knew the correctiveness of God. They, they, they only knew the, the, the rebuking. The, that, that's all you knew. And so then we have to lead you to come to know who Jesus is, the redemptive voice. So why don't you speak to that person in the redemptive voice of Christ? Like that was a pretty bad decision, but come, let me show you a better, a better version. Let me show you a better way. And this is why so many people like law giving churches. They like being in those churches that rebuke them, that, 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 that don't tolerate anything. You can see it sometimes when people say, Oh, y'all dancing in the church. Y'all doing this. And see, that's those people only have one version of God. And that's the corrective. That's all they know. That, that you you ought to be ashamed of yourself. That the church is, is a holy place. You dancing in the sanctuary. But Dr. Nika was talking about something that happened at Union in D.C. And people was on a page just going at it. Some of you, that's all you know. You don't know the voice of Jesus. You have no redemptive grace in your life at all. Because your version of God is always corrective. Whoa, because you have been taught that God is mean. You've been taught that. 
and you've been taught that God is going to kill you and God's going to get you and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And why, why? And you can always, you always know they go into the Old Testament, put a difference between what is clean and unclean. That, that is holy, make it holy. You know that that's the father. They know the father. They are always corrected. They're always rebuking. They're always threatening death or threatening something horrible. <laughs> no redemptive grace because they don't know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't know that God. They don't know the redemptive Jesus. They don't know, you know, that, that Jesus would probably walk into the sanctuary and dance with them. They don't know that. That, oh my God, if, 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 if I say that, if they heard me say that, when this gets viral, they're going to they gonna crucify me. How dare she tell me that Jesus would come in and sit there and dance. He would. He is redemptive like that. But you only know the corrective God. You know the old covenant God. You have not met the redemptive voice of of Jesus Christ. They would probably walk in and say, now listen, let me give you a better song to play. Let me give you a better dance to dance. He's more redemptive. Y'all know this angry God. You know the corrective God. You know the God that the children of Israel said, we don't want to hear from him no more because we think we're going to die. Most Christians, some Christians actually think they're going to die every day because God is so angry with them. That God is, is going to absolutely destroy them no matter what they do. They can never get it right. So if they live in fear. They live in this, 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 this space of, of, oh God, oh, they're going to lose their salvation. They can't stay saved. They can't do nothing because God is going to get you. God, and that's the God you know. But Jesus is the redemptive. He's the redemptive Christ. He says, come and let me make a better version of you. Let me give you a better way to do life. Let me give you a better way to approach your family. Let me give you a better way to eat. Let me give you a better way to live, to prosper. Come follow me and I'll make something out of you. When you hear people say, God going to get you for that. God going to get you. Ooh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Did you see that, Bishop? Did you see that? Oh, my God. Ooh, the church is going to hell in a handbasket. Those people speak out of the corrective dispensation. Everything is a sin. Everything, everybody is going to hell. Everybody, everything is wrong. Everybody got to tell you that you are wrong. It's not holy. It's not of God. That's the old covenant voice. The new covenant, the new testament, Jesus Christ is a redemptive side of God. He's the redemptive. He's the redeemer. So his voice is already redeeming, always redeeming. So now let me show you a more excellent way. That was good. But let go back. Let me, let me show you something different. <laughs> let me show you something different. Let, let me give you a better uh, view of that. Let me, let me show you that if you turn it a little to the left, you might get better results. Okay. And, and so he's redemptive. He's always redemptive. Always redemptive. <laughs> Lady Spence. And, and so we don't see, we don't see that. Now, enter into the dispensation of Holy Spirit. Enter into the dispensation of Holy Spirit. This is why you and I must know Holy Spirit personally. You must know Holy Spirit personally. Some of y'all are saved from the perspective of you have received Christ and the finished work. And you have, some of you are even baptized in the Holy Spirit. But you mean, you mean spirited because that's the way you see God. That's the voice you know. And so everybody is going to hell. Everybody. Everybody's wrong. Everybody, everything, everybody do. You got to scrutinize it. You got to criticize it. Because in your mind, God is not pleased. Jesus says, I've come to redeem you. I've come to reconcile. He's always. So when you hear that voice, when I hear Jesus talking to me, I know, okay, I could have did that better. Okay. All right. I hear you, Lord. My sheep know my voice. 
Are you able to distinguish the voice of Father corrective? The voice of Jesus Christ redemptive. You done told this up again. And I'm going to get you out of here. Because you shouldn't have did it. My spirit warned you. My spirit told you. My spirit gave you the instructions. And you didn't find it. Now come on. Because I got to get you out of this. Because you are in a quagmire of your own design. And then Holy Spirit comes with the instruction. This is why he has these manifestations of gifts. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, discernment of spirits. See, and now, and now, Holy Spirit, Kesha. Woo. <laughs> Letitia says, I, I left a Facebook group a few weeks ago because of it. Absolutely, that's all they're doing. They, know, they only know the corrective God. And they believe that they are the ambassadors of that God. They don't get anybody saved. They just police the church. Some of y'all, that's all you do is police the body. You police the church. You think that God is not pleased. So you have deputized yourself and made yourself a deputy Barney fight. You got your, and you think you're supposed to go through the whole world and correct people because you don't know Christ the Redeemer. Not personally. And you definitely don't know Holy Spirit. So yes, I I know the voice. I know I know the distinct voices. And now I must distinguish their voices from my own. I must distinguish their voices from my own. The noise. The noise. The noise. <laughs> I got to be able to distinguish that if I am going to respond. So our prayer, our cry is teach me to hear. Teach me to listen. Lord, you said I will know your voice. So I want to know the voice that guides me today. I want to know the voice of Holy Spirit. Now, this is what Jesus said. I got to go. Listen, listen to this. you got to hear this. This is so important. Go with me right quickly to John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. And you don't have to worry about uh, 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 insulting Jesus because now you're listening to the Holy Spirit. You don't have to worry about insulting the Holy Spirit because, you, because the Father is being. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about this. This is already designed and worked out for us. Hallelujah. And so when you when you hear his voice hard and not your heart, good God Almighty. Woo! Ho, 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 Holy Spirit. Woo! Rabba Kashkete. Go to John 14 right quickly. And said, But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Now listen to all three of them. Listen to it. That's why I don't I don't argue Godhead. I don't get into Godhead argument. Because there's no win. The helper. Who is the comforter, the paracletos, Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send. I don't know what y'all going to do with these scriptures, but they're here. In my name, this is the Lord Jesus, Jesus the Christ speaking. He will teach you all things. Watch this. And he will bring everything to your remembrance. Voice recognition. <laughs> Pastor Davis, voice recognition. If I go in my in my front room and I say, Alexa, play so and so, voice recognition. Voice recognition. John 14 and 26. He said, He will bring all things to your remembrance that I have said unto you. Now go over to John 16, John chapter 16. And Jesus said, There's some things I really want to say, but you cannot hear them now. Some very redemptive kinds of things that I really want to say to y'all, but I got to go. So when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. He will keep you in truth and he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. 
and he will glorify me for he will take from what is mine and declare it unto you. Wow. Woo, shekata. Woo. <laughs> You better hear what I'm saying. You better hear what I'm saying. Voice activated. You see, so Holy Spirit is going to take from who, from what Jesus has said. And now he's going to, he's going to, to, to make it so that you can now hear it in his voice. But he's going to bring it back to your remembrance. What you read in the scriptures, what you've heard Jesus say to you, Holy Spirit is going to bring it to your remembrance. He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. All right. So now you have to be able, uh, John chapter number 14, verses 26 and 27, Kimberly, John 14, 26, 27. He's going to take from what is mine and make it known to you. Now, how are you going to know it if you don't know his voice? If you're always looking for Holy Spirit to be corrective and hard and punitive, you're going to miss it because that's not the voice of Holy Spirit. You own many of you, and I'm talking to you about the Spirit of God. Many of you only know the Father's voice, which was corrective, which was always about you. You're not in the right place. You know, and this is why Israel said, we don't even want to hear from him no more. Moses, you talk to him and then you come to us and tell us what he said. Because every time he speaks, we feel like we're going to die. But that's all some of you know. You don't know the redeeming voice of Jesus Christ. You have no mercy for anybody. You're mean spirited and critical. You're very hostile toward God's people. You're very hostile toward anything that you think that 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 is wrong. You are out to destroy, kill, steal, and destroy. You are out to kill everybody, kill everything, because that's the only voice you know. You haven't you haven't met the redemptive voice of Jesus. You offer no redemptive value to any situation because all you know is. Is God gonna kill you? You gonna die? You gonna go to hell? You gonna that? Some of y'all came to the cathedral like that, and I said, "Oh, oh wait, wait, wait! This is the Holy Ghost Cathedral. We we not this ain't the Jehovah Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> Hold on just a minute. That's not the sound in here. There's always redemption, and you don't have to agree with something, and it don't make it sin because you don't agree, or you don't prefer that, or you don't like it." I just stopped some of the saints in my church. I said, now listen, listen, listen. That voice, you cannot speak that voice in here. Hey, it's wrong, Bishop. It's, uh, yeah, who, what makes it wrong? You don't have no scriptures to support it's wrong. You don't like it, and you have that right. But where is the redemption? Where is the redemption? And where is the instruction? So everybody going to hell? Now, that's a whole nother subject. <laughs> we ain't going to even talk about hell. But everybody, you're going to send everybody to hell? Is that, that's the God you know. That's the voice you know. That voice is corrective and fearful, and that's the only voice you know. You don't know the redeeming voice of Christ, and you don't know the instructional voice of Holy Spirit. That's why your responses are so delayed. Well, <laughs> woo, I got to get out of here. <laughs> Time by shake. Woo, shanda na na shake. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Listen to me carefully. How well do you know the voice of your God? Are you able to discern the corrective voice of the Father, not punitive? Are you able to discern? the redemptive voice of Jesus the Christ? And are you able to follow the instructive voice of Holy Spirit? Well, keep on coming. This class is, uh, is not going to end until I know that you know the distinct voices of your God. I got to go. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah.